Aren't they horrible? Aren't they horrible? They're necessary, but horrible. Um, I just wanted to say this. I was a teacher. I am a teacher. I've been a teacher really all my life. And if I'm proud of anything, I think it's that. Truth is, you don't get many awards for that, which is interesting. Um, why am I proud of it? Because it's, in my view, the noblest profession that there is. It is hard. It's exhausting. It can be very, very difficult, but ultimately the most rewarding job in the world as well. Because you people change lives, and you do it usually by creating moments. And I felt when I taught myself that I began to know that after two or three years, I realized teaching year sixes, which could be a nightmare, by the way. Any year sixes here? Put up your hands if you're year sixes. Yep, that's roughly what they like. Um, but they're wonderful. I taught them for some time. And I always finish the day with a story. And it's something I've been trying to encourage ministers of education to adapt in our schools countrywide to finish the day not with a test, but with a story to go away with in your head when you leave school. Not to ask any questions afterwards, no comprehension tests, just lose yourself in a story. And I did this for the last few years I taught in school. And I know it worked because I've met these children many years later as parents who come up and they remember the moment, the time, when they first, they first heard the magic of stories. And they've been readers ever since. So I thought it appropriate today not to lecture you. You've probably done enough of lectures in the last three years, instead of which I'm going to read you a story, which is quite good, because you can listen, or indeed you could do what some of the children do in my class and simply go to sleep. That's fine, because it's keeping children quiet, and that's also part of teaching. <laughs> I wrote this story in the first March of lockdown, when we were all sad, probably sadder than we've ever been in our lives, and sometimes we had deep, deep personal reasons to be sad. Other times I think it was just disbelief and gloom that settled on us. I went out one morning to pick some vegetables in my vegetable garden and a blackbird sang. And I sang back. And the blackbird sang back to me and we had a conversation. And I knew what the blackbird was trying to tell me. So I wrote this. Out of the sadness I wrote a song of gladness. I've been talking every morning to Blackbird, telling him why we are so sad. He sits on his branch and listens. It was Blackbird's idea. He sang it out this morning at dawn from his treetop in the garden to Fox half asleep behind the garden shed. She thought it a good idea too. It was a wake-up call. Fox was on her feet at once and trotting through Bluebell Wood, where she barked it to Deer, who ran off across the stream. Kingfisher was there, Otter and Dipper too. They heard and piped it on, and Swallow swooped down over the meadow and passed it on to cows waiting to go into their milking and to sheep resting quietly under the hedge with her lambs in the corner of the dew-damp field. And they all agreed, bleating it out to bees already busy at their flowers, to weaving spiders and grasshoppers and scurrying mice. Trees were listening too, all the trees, waving their budding leaves in wild enthusiasm. High above, in the skies, clouds gathered, driven by wind, and wind took Blackbird's idea over the cliffs across heaving seas, where gulls and albatross cried it out, and whales and dolphins and porpoises heard it, and wailed and whooped it down into the deep, where turtles listened. And they too 
loved the idea. So did plankton and every fish and crab and sea urchin and whelk. They all whispered that it was a fine notion, the best they ever heard. In rivers, salmon and sea trout leapt for joy to hear it. Eagles, soaring above on wide wings, flew over the mountains, crying it out loud. And the echoes were heard deep in the dens below, where slumbering bears listened, lost in their dreams of spring. They snored and grunted their approval, even in their sleep. Snows melted at the thought of it, and the whole wonderful idea flooded down the mountain streams and far out to sea, where the tide took it and carried it over the sea on curling waves to distant shores, to parched plains, where lions roared their approval and elephants trumpeted it, leopards yawned it, water buffalo belched it, wild dogs yelped it, and wildebeest murmured it out across the wide savannah. Then storm lifted the idea up over rainforests, where rain took it and poured it down on gorillas in the mist, on chimpanzees in their sleeping nests, and crocodile swished his tail in his swamp and clamped his great jaw shut smiling at the very thought of it. Howler monkeys and gibbons echoed their calls loud over all the earth. They are that loud. And then from far up high, sun heard it too and shone it down over deserts where Oryx stamped her foot, impatient to be getting on with it and doing it. She loved the idea that much. Even camel who rarely joined in anything, thought this was the best and most beautiful idea he had ever heard. Back in the garden, Blackbird waited till everyone was ready. And then he began to sing. The whole carnival of animals heard him, and every living thing on this good earth joined in. Until the globe echoed with the joy of it, and Blackbird was very pleased. But I was still lost in sadness as I heard the earth singing around me. It was a song of forgiveness. I knew that. So I asked Blackbird if I was allowed to join in, and he sang his answer back to me. My friend, why do you think we are doing this? We want you and yours to be happy again. Only then will you treat us and the world right, as you know you should. Only then we'll all be well. So sing, my friend. Sing our song is your song. Your song is our song. So I sang. We all sang, sang away our sadness. In every house and flat and cottage, we clapped and sang. In every shelter and tent, in every school and Paris and, and hospital and prison. And they heard and we heard our song of gladness echoing about us in glorious harmony across the universe. Congratulations, you people, all dressed up as butterflies. You look wonderful. <laughs> I wanted to have a costume like that, bright with colour, proper plumage. Instead, they gave me this black thing. But they did give me some cream for my hand, so I'm pleased to be here. Good luck, all of you.